welcome friends to this Ash Wednesday service at the beginning of Lent in the year 2021. We're worshiping remotely. We will be praying. We'll be reading scripture. We will be, have a song. We will be uh, focusing on the symbolism of ashes and the anointing of oil. Uh, if you want to locate some olive oil or vegetable oil in your house and have it with you, that certainly can be a part of the worship service for you. While we wish that we were not worshiping uh, only remotely and we wish that we were closer in person, that is part of this season. We are grateful to God for bringing us together in all the ways that we are brought together, including in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Again, this Ash Wednesday, we are worshiping God. Our call to worship includes these sentences. O Christ, Savior, like the seed fallen to the ground, you suffered death. United to you, our lives will bear much fruit. We praise you, Lord. O Christ, you went down to the lowest point of the human condition. You remain close to all who are abandoned. We praise you, Lord. In your love, you took upon yourself our sin. Innocent, you accepted death to free us from the fear of death's hold. We praise you, Lord. You listen to us in your goodness and you visit us in our misfortune. Fill our hearts to overflowing by revealing to us the light of your face. We praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of confession. In our many vulnerabilities, we hear God's whispering to us that we are made in the divine image and that faithfulness to that truth is all we need for the journey. So let us ponder what it is that we may let go in this season of Lent in order to help us hear more clearly the stories of Jesus' extravagant love for all and to follow him more bravely and confidently. So we pray with the words from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Friends, let us be joined together in a few moments of silent prayer. May God, the Creator, who does not despise the broken spirit, give us contrite hearts. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body, heal us by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak words of pardon and peace. Amen. Amen. Our reading today comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, 
and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues, and was praised by everyone. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Friends, on this Ash Wednesday, we have just read the traditional scripture reading of Jesus from his baptism going into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. The tradition of ashes goes back to the book of Genesis where it is written that human beings are created from the dust of the earth and God breathes into the human beings uh, the very breath or spirit of God. As part of the liturgy of Ash Wednesday across the centuries, it has then developed to where when ashes are imposed on the forehead, one of the most traditional sayings is, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So a theme of Ash Wednesday and of Lent is remembering our mortality, that in God, from life to death and beyond, we belong to God. So centuries later, from the writing in Genesis, the Apostle Paul would write, after Jesus' life, ministry, death, resurrection, about 20 years later, the Apostle Paul would write in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, for as in Adam, and we can say in Eve, in the first humans, all die, so also in Christ Jesus are all made alive. So it is also appropriate on Ash Wednesday for us to impose ashes, to remember ashes with that phrase, for as in the first humans all die, so also in Christ are all made alive. Today we are worshiping remotely in 2021, Ash Wednesday, because of the COVID-19 virus. We are not in person, so the priest or the pastor is not imposing ashes uh, to each one as we are close together. Emily will speak about the oil for anointing in just a moment, how usually that's part of the service. A, a thumb is dipped in the oil and then in the ashes, and it's the oil that holds the ashes in the sign on the forehead or on the back of the hand. We'll separate those and we'll go back actually in a moment to an earlier tradition in the church. Before the imposition of ashes in the sign of the cross, probably in about the 10 hundreds or 11 hundreds, the priest in the early church simply poured the ashes or scattered the ashes as a reminder that we are mortal, that we are dust, given life by the breath of God, and to dust we shall return. So, tonight, today, in the tradition of the even earlier church, from the 600s to the 10 hundreds, we pour these ashes, remembering that we are mortal, and that as mortal human beings in the midst of creation, as with those first human beings, we die. And yet, in Jesus Christ, all are made alive. 
Friends, let us pray. O God, we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love and serve you. Even when we turned away from you, our Maker, you continued to love us, calling us through prophets to turn again to you in obedient love. You sent Jesus to free us from the tyranny of sin. He lived as one of us, fully human, a creature full of your spirit who taught us your ways. Baptized as one of your own, death by torture could not reduce him to nothing. By his rising, he released us from bondage to sin, freeing us to live as new people, citizens of the kingdom of God always. Remembering all that Jesus taught us, we come before you in thanksgiving for all you've done for us, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice devoted to following in your way. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may be united in true communion with you, with one another, and with all the saints of all times and places who forever sing your praise. Keep us one in Christ as we pray for the world, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For For thine is the kingdom kingdom, and the power and and the the glory glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this time, we invite you with an oil that you might already have in your house, just common olive oil, to come before God in our brokenness and to seek healing in God's love. In ancient times, olive oil was used as a healing oil. People were anointed with it for healing and wholeness. Today we do much of the same. And additionally, in Christian tradition, olive oil was used as a symbol of the Spirit. And people were anointed with olive oil in the power of the Spirit to live in the ways of the gospel, to love in the ways of the gospel. During Ash Wednesday, we will often mix olive oil with the ashes as a form of blessing in our mortality. Today, we recognize that you might not have palm ashes in your home. So we invite you to take some olive oil and pour it into a small dish. And you can either dip your finger in it and sign yourself with the sign of the cross on your forehead to remind us that we are made whole and healed in Jesus' love and grace. Or you might dip your finger and do so on the back of your hand, anointing yourself once again in God's love and healing wholeness. Pastor Ted. For as in the first human beings we all die, so also in Jesus Christ are we made alive. Amen. Amen. Would you join us now in singing, Come to Me, O Weary Traveler.
May the love of God enfold us. May the grace of God uphold us. May the power of God set us free to love and serve all God's people. Now to God, who by the means of power working in us is able to do so much more than we can ask or even think. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. And may the spirit of gentleness be your companion along this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen.